What's up guys, Eric here with the Hollow Herald. Today we have a slightly different video than our usual stuff for you guys. We're going to be building a mixed reality computer, uh, or a computer specifically designed for mixed reality. Our use case is a little bit different. We've realized that my laptop and Austin's PC have not been able to handle the mixed reality portal or VR or rendering in 4K now that we've been filming in 4K. Uh, it just can't handle it. So we decided to build a whole new rig it's going to be really awesome, and hope you guys enjoy the ride. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, here we are. We're just going to run through some of the components for our augmented reality computer build. First, let's start up with the motherboard. We decided to go with the ROG Strix B350F gaming motherboard. That's a mouthful. Uh, we went with this one for a couple reasons. Price was one of the big reasons, and Strix is our graphics card, so we decided to just keep it the same the whole way through. Uh, this is overclockable, but it cannot do SLI, but that's fine because we got a 1080 Ti, so no biggie. All right, let's move on. Next, we have the Ryzen 7. Uh, specifically, the Ryzen, the AMD Ryzen 7 1700. Uh, you can read all the specs right there. Like I said, we're not going to go super in-depth. We just wanted to go through and show off all of our components before we throw them in the computer, and it gets a lot harder to explain them. Uh, we decided to go with this just because we wanted the extra beef, and since we do a lot of editing with Adobe, normally when you edit with Adobe you have like three to four programs open at the same time, so we just wanted to have all the extra cores to be able to handle all of that. Since we got the 7 and we wanted the ability to overclock the Ryzen 7, uh, we decided it'd probably be best to invest in a liquid cooler for the processor. This is the Master Liquid light 120. Uh, it's a, just a pretty simple base one. This one costs around like $50 I think. Uh, this should be really helpful for keeping it cool. Uh, our build is inspired by the AMD build by Linus Tech Tips. We're really big fans of Linus Tech Tips and they do a really good build for every budget there that'll work for all your needs. We just kind of mix some of our own stuff in there but this is where we got that idea for that. All right, the shining piece of our entire build, the Geoforce GTX 1080, uh, Strix edition. So uh, we're really excited with this one. We went with the Strix edition of the uh, GTX 1080 for the cooling, the overclockability, um, the ports, everything just works really nice with it. It's VR ready, which obviously it's a 1080 Ti, it better be <laughs> VR ready if it's not. Uh, it comes with Gameworks, Ansel, VRWorks, and DirectX 12, which will come in handy for a lot of VR stuff. We decided to go with the 1080 with a little bit of extra bump in power to be able to handle VR. We have a whole setup in our office where we want to be able to run VR to a TV and to a console at the same time so people can see what's going on in the VR. Um, we also do a lot of, we're going to start rendering all of our stuff in 4K. So we wanted that extra beef to be able to render everything faster and not sit there all night watching renders and be able to scrub through everything much better. Uh, it is a little bit overkill for our needs, but uh, we decided to future-proof it. And this was probably our best bet. Uh, if you guys are planning on building a PC for any purposes, make sure you guys don't go with the, the GTX 1080 Ti Founders Edition made by NVIDIA. Uh, it cost about... $1,200 on Amazon or Newegg now, and you could pick this one up for just under $600. So definitely go with an off-brand. Um, you get the same power for a lot less price. That's something I didn't know going into this, and I almost made the mistake if it wasn't for a friend. All right, and since we're broke, we had to go with not the best RAM. We decided to go with 16 gigs of uh, DDR4 RAM. This is by T-Force. It's an Team Force, I think, is the name of the full brand. Uh, 
it's just a no-name brand, really. It's the cheapest stuff on Newegg. It was on sale at the time. So if you guys know anything about it, if it's crappy or not, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, we're just on a pretty tight budget, so we had to go with some of the cheaper stuff. And then to power this beast, we picked up the Seasonic M12 2 Bronze Evo Edition Ultimate the ultimate fully modular power supply. Specifically, it's a 620 watt. Uh, we decided to go with the extra watts so that we could really power the graphics card and the motherboard and everything we have plugged into it because we're planning on having a lot of stuff plugged into it, especially when we stream the podcast. We have a lot of microphones. We have a lot of everything running off of it. Even though it might be a little bit overkill, it's better to go this way than to be sorry. And it was honestly the same price as a 550. Uh, or even a 520, it was on sale, and so we just decided to go with it. It is heavy though. All right, and for our SSD, we just went with a SanDisk. This just happened to be on sale. We were originally gonna go with a Western Digital, but like they do in the tech, Linus Tech Tips build, but this just happened to be on sale. We're really big fans of SanDisk. We use all their SD cards. Um, it's 240 gigs. That should be plenty of size for what we need. Mostly it's just gonna load our Adobe programs and Steam and just a couple other programs. Nothing really special about this, just a generic SSD. One thing I did learn over the years is if you are gonna get an SSD, try to go as big as you possibly can afford. I got a small SSD in my graphics, I mean, I got a small SSD in my laptop and I've just regretted the heck out of it. And for storage, since we're broke at the time, uh, we decided to just go with a small two terabyte Western Digital HDD. Uh, it's not the fastest, but it's cheap, and it'll get us by until we can afford better stuff. We end up wanting to use this as a me media machine and run Plex and have a bunch of movies and stuff on there. Uh, so we'll end up having a whole stack of them. Also with filming 4K footage and rendering so many videos, uh, they fill up really fast. So for a media machine and a workstation, this is really important. We're not super big gamers, so we don't have to have a lot of room for gaming, but just for all of our files and everything. This is something you'll definitely see upgraded in the future. And this was because of Austin. We did, I didn't really care about this, but he swore by Arctic. It's not the silver one specifically because we're too cheap and it didn't have prime shipping and we wanted it here quickly. But if you can, get the Arctic silver stuff if you can wait for it. It has better ratings. I have no idea about this stuff. There's way better videos for this. Anyways, that's what we went with. And then finally, you got to have your bootable uh, USB for Windows 10. Um, all right, and for the uh, case, we went with the Fantex something, 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 something. I can't read it from right here, but it's basically the, the cheapest tempered glass one on Newegg. They used it in the Linus Tech Tips build, and we're just fanboys, so we're just gonna follow anything they say. It is the S edition, whatever that means. Uh, pretty simple, should look nice. It's the gray edition, the dark gray or earth gray or something like that. It should look really nice. So those are our parts we used. We realized it's a pretty overkill for what we need, uh, but I'll get to my final thoughts in the outro. But before we do that, let's show you guys what it looks like all put together. We didn't film that process, but it looks pretty good. Here are those. <laughs> So here's our final thoughts for the build. We've got to benchmark, we've got to do some awesome things. This runs mixed reality perfectly, 90 frames a second solid, no bumps, any games on it, runs it completely fine. We're gonna have a, probably a follow-up video with benchmarks and everything coming very soon. Um, we realize this is extremely overkill for what we need. We decided though that we were gonna future-proof with this build. 
We don't want to have to build any more computer parts. We don't have to order any more parts. We don't have to worry about it. We just want whatever we can throw at this, we want it to be able to handle. But that's probably not the best use case for you guys, especially since you guys aren't going to be rendering videos, uh, streaming, and doing a lot of that workstation intensive stuff. And we realize this is not the most optimal build for mixed reality. So we have a video coming out really soon called The Cheapskate's Guide to MR, which is going to be a complete end-to-end -end A, B, C, D for MR, including the headset. Hopefully getting an entire rig to run 90 frames a second and run all your gaming, run all your MR, VR for under $1,000, specifically focused on Windows Mixed Reality and their specs. So we're gonna have that very soon because we wanna get it for you guys before Black Friday because all of those parts we're talking about are gonna go on deep, deep sale for Black Friday on Newegg and Amazon and everywhere. So we'll have it for you guys. And then hopefully you guys can be ready for MR by Christmas and you guys can be joining us in the virtual world. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video or if you guys are looking forward to our future videos, please subscribe. Uh, leave a comment about our build if there's something we could have done better or if there's something we maybe gone overkill on. Thanks, we'll catch you guys in the next one.